Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, Boston Loy posted something this morning that made it through my feed, and uh, I'm just going to flip it in right here. Some interesting statements going on there. Uh, there's a lot of directions I could go with this. Not even sure where I'm going to go with it. I'm just going to start talking. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing. See if I can skill up my crafting a little bit. And let's get this started. You know, Boston Lloyd is one of those guys that I want to hate. I really try to hate Boston because of his excessive <laughs> drug abuse and promoting excessive drug abuse. It's going to get people killed. And he's not going to live a long life himself. But, you know, he does stuff like this and says stuff like this. And I can't help but like the guy. As much as I try to hate him, I can't help but actually like him. Um, that's just all I can say about that. Because he drops truth bombs sometimes in the most outrageous way that it makes you laugh and it makes you chuckle. But then you got to go, but he's right. He's absolutely right. He's one of the few honest people in this industry. It's messed up that he promotes such heavy drug abuse. But he's honest. Like brutally honest. What more can you say? Uh, you have to respect that to some extent. But that being said, so where did he go? He basically said that BPAC, and I can never get his name right, Ben Paluska. I'm Eastern European too, so I'm here hating on my own ethnicity. I guess that makes me self-hating Eastern European. I don't know, Uncle Tom. But uh, yeah, the names, guys, come on. We got to do better with these names. At least mine, Blaha, we took that J out. When we came over to America, it made it really easy. See how easy that is? There's no silent J in there. Blaha. Come on, Ben. You can do better. Get that name changed. America. That being said, he's absolutely right. BPAC's thousands of dollar boot camp is absolutely worthless. Why would anyone do these boot camps? Furthermore, he's right. Him having a little synthol boot camp would actually do more for people with bodybuilding goals, actually, because that's the only people BPAC appeals to. He's a bodybuilder. No one cares about anything else he's got to do. He's not fitness related. He's not health related. He's not getting anybody stronger or healthier with his concepts. I mean, he guys chock full of huge amounts of drugs, gets excessively lean, huge amounts of sight enhancement. Um, nothing to offer there. We'll talk about, I think, uh, boot camps in a bit, but let's talk about the synthol then. Uh, now that we're talking about the sight enhancement, Boston is right. Sight enhancement is an intrinsic part of the bodybuilding world. And I don't just mean the enhanced bodybuilding world, even though pretty much 95 to 99% of guys on that bodybuilding stage in enhanced bodybuilding are using various forms of sight enhancement. Various forms. We got plenty of YouTubers who use tons of it. Uh, everyone from, obviously, Rich Pian has excessive amounts of it, up to even C.T. Fletcher using some in his arms. It's very obvious. But um, you know what? It happens in natural bodybuilding too. Look at Doug Miller. Bunch of people's <laughs> natural bodybuilding golden boy. I've put photos up showing with little arrows before his sight enhancement and his arms, delts, everything. The guy has matching injection whelps in the exact same spot on triceps in the same photo. You'll look and he's literally, the, he's got an injection mark in the exact same spot on both sides and his triceps and his delts they're not even a quarter inch difference they're perfectly matching uh so a guy who clearly likes to use a lot of side enhancement and he's winning so they don't even score it down it's obvious to anyone with a trained eye that's what it is the judges know they don't even score it down they give him wins first places with that stuff side enhancement is a part of bodybuilding and it's because they expect proportions that lifting weights is not going to give a person normally they want bigger arms and delts in proportion to certain other muscles that if you were to train balance you're not going to achieve they just want your arms to be an inch or two bigger than your frame will generally allow for at any given size and body weight so there's no way around it other than a very small number of genetically gifted guys like arnold schwarzenegger back in the day um, can get the arm proportions and stuff and sometimes adult proportions that they want so sight enhancement becomes necessary because everyone, people don't realize how hard it is to really build big arms without the right genetics. Even steroids and growth hormone and everything are only going to give you so much size in your arms. Um, and all the endless curls in the world don't really help as much as people think they do there. So yeah, sight enhancement is an intrinsic part of that bodybuilding world. I tend to not like it and I understand it's there and that's what's required for those proportions. I personally, coming from a strength athlete background, um, 
see function is more important than form. It doesn't matter if you look the part. Looking the part is only a secondary, is a side benefit for people who happen to proportion out that way or get that level of leanness doing what they do. Um, function is more important. How strong? How fast are you? How much conditioning do you have in terms of being able to run, jog, do cardio? You know, uh, again, how, how strong are you? How fit are you? Though that's the stuff that I care about in people, but I know a lot of people care about aesthetics. You know what? That's just my opinion. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. Opinion's not right or wrong. Your opinion might be that aesthetics is the most important thing to you. And you know what? If that makes you happy, then uh, carry on. You know, live your life. Do you. But that being said, the synthol, because of the aesthetics that the bodybuilding world and now the online fitness world promotes, actually becomes kind of necessary. Sight enhancement is almost necessary for many people to reach those proportions. So Boston is actually right. That would do more for their goals. But let's talk about these boot camps. Boot camps are the worst, most stupid fitness idea I've ever seen anyone come up with. Essentially, people pay money, and large sums of money, uh, and again, in this case, thousands of dollars to someone like BPAC to do his camp. What does he know about fitness? He's a pro bodybuilder. He is not healthy at all. The guy you know, just uses enormous amounts of drugs and uh, fat burners and everything else to reach his goals and sight enhancement. Most bodybuilders are not healthy. But they run these fitness boot camps. And seriously, what would a boot camp do for you? Shock your body? Push you to exhaustion? Injure you? How does that help anyone get into shape? You can't build in a three-day boot camp or a two-day boot camp. You're not going to build any noticeable amount of muscle and you're not going to lose more than a few ounces of fat. The human body will not sacrifice very much fat in a 24-hour period. It has a very finite amount it will let go of even if you starve yourself. Uh, it will burn into muscle tissue, liver glycogen, everything else before it will let you go beyond a certain threshold of fat loss. So it will actually cause uh, muscle loss long before it causes fat loss beyond the threshold. You're only going to lose a few ounces of fat in a day. So even then, these people do a boot camp, they're not even going to lose a half pound of body fat during that boot camp. What's the point then? Everything's about chronic changes, not acute. And, you know, shocking your body doesn't build a bunch of muscle either. You build muscle slowly by increasing the workload and the tension and the metabolic fatigue on a muscle in small increments over days, months, and years. That's how a muscle gets bigger, okay? From training, at least. Now, drugs are a different ballgame, and Ben could tell them a lot about that. But training, it is about the little small changes over time. It's about adding a pound here, adding a rep there. A little more workload, a little more tension over time with adequate sleep and adequate nutrition. And you can't speed that process up without drugs. Shocking the body doesn't do anything to help that. So what is it these people are trying to achieve? You can't shock the body into muscle growth and you can't shock it into fat loss. But people are going to pay thousands of dollars to be worn down, beat up, and do these stupid ass boot camps that don't do anything in the long term to help their goals. And people say, well, it helps get you motivated. Really? You need to pay thousands of dollars and go do a stupid boot camp that doesn't teach you anything of value to get motivated? If that's the case, then um, just give the fuck up. You don't have any motivation for your desired goal. You don't need to get hyped up and motivated like that to reach a goal. You guys need to understand, we're talking about the difference between the tortoise and the hare here. The people who want to get all hyped up and do crazy stuff are like the hare and they burn out before the end. The tortoise who just slowly t runs towards a goal over time, who goes through the journey, the process, he's the one who's going to get the long-term results. So the people who even have this boot camp mentality are already setting themselves up for failure, but they're willing to pay large sums of money to fail. Think about that for a minute. It's ridiculous. It's a terrible marketing idea. And I've never liked it, never been able to support it because, again, it's not about shocking your body or exhausting yourself or making yourself sore. It's about those incremental changes over time that take place over many months and sometimes years. That's how you reach a fitness goal. Little baby steps. You just slowly over time make things a little harder here, a little harder there. You know, again, how do you get a bigger bicep? Curl the 10 pounds till you can do 12 reps with them. Then work on the 12 pound dumbbells so you can get to uh, 12 reps with them. And then step up to the 15s and work with eight reps or nine reps or whatever you can do and build those up to the 12 reps. And you know what, about the time you get to them 40 pound dumbbells and you can do those for 12, 13 reps a time, your biceps are gonna have grown noticeably. There you go, there's the magic secret. That's the secret to making your arms grow. How do you get better cardiovascular conditioning? 
you start by running a quarter mile till you're you're tired and then you fall down and then the next day you try to add a 50 yards to it and the next day 50 yards to it before long you're able to run five miles then when you get to five miles in a couple months time you increase that and you're able to get to 10 miles that's how you increase it over the days the months in the years you improve your conditioning by doing just a little more every now and then progressive overload the body adapts and that's the way the body adapts those little small changes over time when done consistently produce adaptation after adaptation after adaptation and that's how you get better that's how you get bigger that's how you get stronger that's how you get more conditioned that's how you get more fit shocking your body doesn't help if anything shocking your body with a stupid ass boot camp could set you back a week on your goals because you do this stupid shift that is way more than you need to adapt to or to progress and then you have to spend a week recovering from it it's fucking stupid and people charge excessive amounts of money for this and it's one of the biggest schemes and con things done in the whole fitness world absolutely silly you want to get into better shape just slowly start working towards the goal and you know what in a year you're going to see a dramatic difference if you're just consistent and slowly improve over time it's about the journey guys the tortoise beats the hare every single time when it comes to fitness goals um, patience and consistency actually trump hard work that is an absolute fact when it comes to fitness goals. I'll repeat that again. Patience and consistency day after day after day. Being consistent in those little tiny consistent improvements will beat hard work and busting your ass in the short term and burning out and injuring yourself every single time. It's that simple, guys. And these boot camps are stupid. So Boston got it dead on by one, calling out the worthlessness of the boot camps. And again, a big bodybuilding celebrity like this guy charging thousands of dollars for a worthless ass boost boot camp. And the reality is for people who have real bodybuilding goals, which is what both these guys promote, hell, him having a synthol camp for a few dollars would actually do more towards their long-term goals because synthol at least sometimes builds up permanent scar tissue. It gets encapsulated in that muscle and bodybuilders are just about changes in appearance anyways, not uh, improving fitness. That his actual camp would probably do more for their goals for 1% of the cost. And it's, uh, it's ridiculous what he's saying. It's absolutely ridiculous, but technically it's true. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.